ultimately, and this is what is uncomfortable, it brings us to a point where the whole environmental debate, climate debate, nature degradation debate, is ultimately a redistribution debate. So I'm puzzled that uh, Europe has not contributed to the Bond Challenge, uh, which is a commitment for 350 million hectares of forest landscape restoration. I will point to my participation in 2002, 10 years after the Rio summit, uh, to take stock and to have a way forward. And in Johannesburg in 2002, I was negotiating for the Belgian government a plan of implementation. So already 18 years ago, we were hoping to have a plan of implementation with resources and real action. And in those 18 years, we have seen some progress, but not enough, far enough. And especially on our natural capital, we are still confronted with big challenges. On pollution, we have made some progress on specific pollution issues, but the big natural capital degradation is still happening, unfortunately. There is quite a few, even though I'm not close to them, and, and they are a bit work-related, like the Bielowija forest uh, and the remaining Carpathian forests. But I will talk about a very specific piece of land that my family has in, in the east of Belgium, and we haven't developed it. Uh, it was a natural space. It's a bit of rewilded now. It's quite small and it's surrounded by parcels that have now been developed and where houses have been built. The part that we own has never been declared building surface and therefore it's currently, according to the hard market, it's worth close to nothing on the market. But with regard to natural capital, it's worth a lot and I will keep it like that. I will not change it to a construction ground. First of all, I was really happy to be in, in, this, uh, in this conference and at this panel because it's, it's really the foresters that dominantly were there, the people that know about how to do forestry, that, that manage the land, also the owners were there, the landowners, a very good group, especially a group that is not to convert it you know, according to the conservation um, beliefs, so to say. So it's important to have that dialogue, that's the first thing. And the dialogue needs to be happening in a way that what we do benefits nature and the people and the ones that are actually doing the management on the ground. And so for therefore that's really important. Now to make that argument and to, to go to a situation where we are not over exploiting still, also in the forest context, is to explain the benefits better of sometimes set aside or different management for ecosystem service and the likes. And the point is that often protecting and management of protected areas or protecting services is seen as a cost we really need to go to, to seeing this as an investment. But to have an investment or to call it an investment, there is a need for a return on investment. And so if we do not value, value the natural capital in a proper way, it will be very difficult to make uh, the case for those that own these lands and want to see some, some revenue from it and some return. So I think that's a key thing to get everybody on board, make sure that these ecosystem services are delivered by owners of land, by managing them differently, is properly rewarded. Yeah, I mean, with restoration, the investment cases are sometimes a bit easier because you can see what you're doing. You can see the, 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 the development of, of space into a, into a more resilient uh, area into, and, and, and going from a degraded land into a flourishing land, which, which has a healthier soil and actually has a benefit ultimately, even, even for, for, for the resilience and the, for the timber production, if you need timber production from such a, a area. So restoration and especially in the decade for restoration, should be quite an, or should be an easier call even than just protecting. Uh, and in that context, I'm puzzled that uh, Europe has not contributed to the Bond Challenge, uh, which is a commitment for 350 million hectares of forest landscape restoration. Uh, it's only Scotland that has uh, pledged 170,000 hectares, but no other single European or EU country has put anything on the table yet. And so I hope that these conferences like uh, today and yesterday can, can actually help to, to convince decision makers to, some, to put something on the table as well. Yeah. Our footprint is being exported or we are importing the, the degradation that we are causing because of our consumption. Um, that is this sometimes called indirect land use changes and, and it comes from just our overconsumption. It's an uncomfortable truth that we have to fundamentally and absolutely redu reduce our consumption. It's changing the consumption, but also reducing, and then making sure, of course, it comes from, from uh, sources that are uh, certified and controlled. 
Um, and that's unfortunately not still happening at the space and uh, at the pace that is needed, the speed is needed. So there is big, still big challenges on that front, yeah. But it, yeah, it hurts us very directly. And much of that consumption, we just don't see the effect of it in Europe itself. So that is, that is what makes it even more difficult to sell uh, politically. There is a big need for protection, and we should not lose sight of that, because that's a risk in such a decade for restoration, that we think we can restore everything we destroy. So we should definitely stop by destroying the pristine nature we still have, which is only little left, especially in Europe. But globally, there's still lots that we can save. That is absolutely needed. Of course, the light, the, it is depending also on the livelihoods and the development of the people in those developing countries, which means there is a right for development and a right for use, and therefore some areas may still be very much under pressure. That means, ultimately, and this is what is uncomfortable, it brings us to a point where the whole environmental debate, climate debate, nature degradation debate, is ultimately a redistribution debate. Because if we want to have a just transition, it means redistributing among the rich and the poor countries. It's actually also about redistributing within countries. And that, of course, becomes immediately very political. But it is ultimately what it is. We have this planetary boundary. There's only so much we can use and everybody should have a fair share. And so I think in that context, uh, the restoration targets in the developing countries are important, but they should be as important in our own territories. I'd like to add something um, that came to my attention Surprisingly, only quite recently, or at least at, at the scale it is happening. Because we look at, uh, at illegal timber coming out of the tropics a lot, uh, and maybe not still enough, and we don't, we're not able to fully control it. But I was told, or I've seen reports that, that seem to prove that even bigger amounts of illegal timber are entering from the further east of Europe, and more specifically from, from Ukraine, where you have vast pristine forests that are currently being locked to import illegal timber into the, into the EU. And that seems to be one of these overlooked uh, challenges that, that we definitely should tackle also in this context of this uh, European Forest Institute conference. But I think if we, if we start understanding that this is not about saving the planet, but it's about safeguarding the ecosystems that provide our livelihood, if we really fully embrace that, and if we see the sustainable development goals in the context of how we should see them, in which the biosphere is the bottom line, your social context is built upon that, and then only then you can have a successful economy, then I, my hopes are high.